Okay, we are resuming our world building, etc. Um, let's see, what are we on now? Yeah, we're on what shapes the dream. Um, these are going to be very exciting and wonderful things uh, that everyone in the mundane world is always thinking about. The stuff that people, I mean, literally dream of, but also like aspire to or hold in as being valuable. So the options are, uh, and this is unless we choose one or two, the options are money, work, surveillance, possessions, edifices, status, sexuality, and conformity. So these are like the prevailing forces that uh, kind of shape the subconscious of people. So this is this is the the established that status quo as opposed to the the conspiracy thing. Yeah, yeah. This is about the the mundane world. So just like the regular everyday people, what is the the prevailing culture kind of hold? I, I feel. Possessions. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Luke. No, Kara, you. I was gonna say it's possessions because it's very like capitalist. And... Yep, and the world we've been describing has been pretty close in that way. Yeah, everyone with close Sorry. bodies and wires and connections and stuff like that. Yeah, and that leads really interestingly into like the trappings of fashion and ritual, mm -hmm. and the the idea, right, that like counterculture is always still like necessarily super informed by normative culture. It's gonna be expressed so, through the same kind of means that the yeah, standard exactly. Is. And like, yeah. I feel like conformity is an obvious choice uh, because like the press of bodies and everything we've been saying kind of implies it. Yeah, but it follows may be, very directly. But it may be that it is like so like naturally implied that we don't need to pick it and we can pick something else instead. Um, but yes, I like possessions. I think Kira's. I think Kira's onto something there. I like possession as well. I would. I would say depending on what else we pick, maybe. Uh, I'm specifically interested in possessions that aren't also status symbols and that aren't also like possessions that are not like the latest Nikes mm -hmm. or that are not a big screen TV or that are not the fastest internet. Like our capitalist culture has focused on a kind of specific kind of like technology possession type thing. I, I would also be interested in possessions that are more personal or idiosyncratic or, mm. you know, like family heirlooms can be really important or, you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, um, like sure. continuity yeah. based possessions um, versus yeah that's what i was thinking as well i was thinking like yeah um yeah things that are imbued with meaning rather than um produced with it and that follows nicely from things. the broader conversation we've been having about like in in all these dimensions that y'all are talking about these all map nicely to the already established choices that we have so yeah i'm this just gonna is, go ahead and underline like, possessions because it yeah. seems this is the like cool. possessions but we mean possessions that would show up in the dream, not just your flat screen TV. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Like they have to, they have to mean enough th that they're worth a damn. Yeah, yeah. that there are Excuse things me, that are imbued with It's points. my grandmother's flat screen TV. <laughs> well, yeah. To me, it also makes dislo like dislocation becomes interesting if you don't have a family to give you heirlooms and they're so important to the cultural dream. Where does that leave you? Mm. No, like where's where do you get what do you all you have is the latest plastic thing yeah like what what facsimiles are exist that you can take on as like mm -hmm. oh this is the like the knickknack on the mantelpiece of my favorite anime character and so i put mm. that in my home as a mm. way of like connecting to something yeah so there are like to me we're pushing possessions in a direction of like icons mm. almost or like like symbolic objects being the big defining thing anyways i'm like super interested in in checking this out in play um yeah, is there so another I, one that is appealing to folks because we can pick two i like surveillance or surveillance jumped out as me as an interesting thing i have no ideas about how it manifests i just really like the idea of it being like I surveillance like, like, like it's like how tied to the wires and not and not have any like further discussion about it now is how that plays out like i'm because like, that can come up in so many different dimensions, whether that's yeah. interpersonal surveillance, like I'm watching you or keeping tabs on you, or if there is like a, if there are cameras it's everywhere. Or for Codian and we've all internalized the Panopticon. Yeah, or is that like self-surveillance and self-regulation? Yeah. I, I would also like to put a vote in for one of these two. I would really like to choose sexuality because I think like it is a major theme of this series playbook. 
Right, because it, it so pops like, up in both this list and the next one. So uh, the question is: yeah. is it is it the one that is like conformity, or is it the one that is hidden, or is it both? Yeah, right. Like I just I would like us. I think since we have elected to play in a playbook where that is like part of the thematic landscape, I think we might as well like lean into it and like commit. Okay, but it seems like maybe in the context of some of the other stuff, it would make sense for sexuality to be a more like something that we hide a from more other private people, thing? or like a, yeah, yeah. Like a very yeah, private that thing was in a way of staking out, uh, yeah, like a personal space. Um, not yeah. that it happens in a really public facing way, or that we like express our sexuality very openly. And and, and like the thing is that, that I feel like ties into the thing of like that like sexuality is indulging in something which isn't possession right like mm. um <laughs> it's not shitty there's some language around well, well but yeah yeah you know, like I, you're not wrong i'm just also being like uh, there's a certain stance of sexuality that wants to do that yeah, yeah um, so like i guess that but like yeah it's about bodies rather than about objects objects i would i would like to put a vote in um I think, yeah, I think surveillance is interesting and I would be down to just pick that without like, and just like see what that turns out like. I also think edifices is interesting because it, particularly if we think about it in a more like generous way, it provides a lead into like the vul the cultural vulnerability that let this ideology go viral in that like, edifices are a thing that like people are like deeply affected by and that they are trained to like respect and dream about see, that, like, I, see, I feel like there you're framing it more like institutions rather than edifices which is i mean i cultural edifices which Andrew, is I, <laughs> by design not I said, on this list but i said i said i was being intellectually generous <laughs> i mean i love the idea of just i like architecture so i love the idea that we're going to describe <laughs> architecture is going to be important <laughs> But yeah. I mean, if that if that were the case, then we would be coming back to that thing of like old buildings even being worth more than new buildings, even if they're run down. Um, which which yeah, is, leads back into the the spiral. Is it, is it just like the aesthetic of the edifices, or is it because what I think conformity confuses me in its description? Like it's basically we're describing we're we're contributing to whatever the status quo is in the setting. Mm -hmm. So like we'll be describing. Would we be described, or would edifices yeah, so, just show up in the dream? So when so we talk about like, yeah, what shapes the dream, this is both to uh, inform its landscape, as you're yeah. describing, right? Of like, do we see buildings? Do we see people's possessions? Do we see like conformity? Might be like, do we see huge faces, crowds, crowds? Um, or also the you know, there's like theming here as well that okay. people will dream of possessing things too like possessiveness will will follow from this importance of possessions and that might okay. push itself onto people or that conformity okay. people might dream of fitting in people might dream of being able to model good social behavior or, or they might have nightmares about the or and the other and thing similarly yeah. yeah nightmares right uh so yes Okay, yeah, gosh. Night nightmares about loss of possessions nightmares about failure to conform so does that does that feel more clear Kira? it does because yeah this is this is something i'm <laughs> noting in my head for later of like i need to be better in my descriptions of some of these categories and what their significance is or how they feed into yeah. the other stuff I, th I think i get the basic gist but i'm i'm trying to dial down into specifically yeah. what you're trying to get at and that makes a lot of sense i think yeah so we're deciding between conformity or edifices or surveillance those are the ones that have been floated. I'm I am more than happy to entertain other uh, things. I'm really I think of those dreams of conformity or dreams of surveillance seem the most like provocative in terms yeah. of like yeah. leading to like interesting and other possibilities. I can definitely <laughs> imagine. Mm -hmm. I think mean, both possessions and edifices is like very like these are dreams about physical places that have physical things in them, which maybe is too much. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. it's nice to have it's something one like... or the other. On the other hand, dream architecture. Just think about those. <laughs> I know it's good. <laughs> well, it's like we Inception. Can... Yeah, and we can loop back to some of our previous choices as well, like that our setting is crisscrossed by wires. Like I'm going to be using that imagery That's in the true. dream and the mundane world, um, because the dream, uh, which you can see over 
over here, uh, the dream is a personal reflection of the waking world. So it's always going to include some of that uh, and be informed by what the mundane world is like. Uh, or the, the question world. is, what else is going but, on there? But that we can we can dive a little deeper with this question here. Uh, so yeah, certainly there will be architecture. I'm all I'm down for that. I think um, I think conformity because it's like the opposite of sexuality, which is going to be in the next. Like we could say, well, not the opposite. Yeah, conformity. Is... Conformity seems like um, I I think I, I like conformity because because it's the obvious choice mm -hmm. with pressed yeah. bodies and things. I actually yeah, like it follows that. really directly. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, and yeah. also. Just to like to skip ahead a little, one of the other ones for the next one I'm thinking about, in addition to sexuality, is I'm really interested, like gender could also be a really interesting pick there. Well, and the coming Luke, together of if you would those wait, options. I will just I will describe this Sorry, list. Sorry, Andrew. From it. So <laughs> the next list is what do we hide from others? Um, so whereas the previous list is kind of about like broader. Uh, like distributed social values and stuff like that, right? Like what, how does the money world kind of generally, what are some things that are generally true about people and what they dream of? This one is going to be much more personal. Um, these all reflect uh, personal stuff. Uh, so uh, what do what do people hide from each other is maybe how I should phrase this. Uh, and so we're going to again choose one or two. Uh, and the list is love, feelings, gender, vulnerability, authenticity, sexuality, intimacy, dissatisfaction. There's some really great pairs here. Like, what does it mean if we hide sexuality but not love, or hide love but not sexuality? This is just me randomly having thoughts. I'm not actually assisting anything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but yeah, these can be, uh, the two can problematize one another in, in mm -hmm. ways. Yeah, like, I think that can be something that's interesting to, to check out. And I also love the idea of a society where everyone hides their gender. Yeah, what like, does that look like? Um, I, I couldn't. I can't imagine it. So, uh, immediately, what comes to mind for me is uh, thinking of uh, early, like, of like revolutionary communist China. There was a movement of not exactly de austerity, de but like, yeah, like a de-emphasis of that, where it's like everyone, if everyone is equal, and we're all like this kind of united proletariat, we're all going to kind of look the same. And the, there was a convergence of fashion that took away a lot of the more traditionally gendered uh fashion and so there's like that which would be leads us pitch, right like a... which leads us right back in right to fashion and ritual yeah like these things all connect yeah i'm really interested in that these all connect yeah. back to this stuff right yeah like if everyone hides their gender then that might mean that they're i it must mean that there is a uniformity of how people present and therefore clothing is all very kind of or gender is no longer about presentation or yeah Totally. I, so I mean, I'm conceiving we... of gender in a very Western way, of course. Uh, sorry, Kira, cut you off. No, 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 you're fine. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, so when we think of these things, will our characters be acting the opposite of these things? Or like, yeah, so... like, or like say I'm pre-gaming a little, mm -hmm. and I'm like, we... you know, everyone's gender is hidden. Does that mean my gender as a character is open because I'm weird? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, like we, you're, we, you're... Stand, we stand for these things. Yeah, we're you're picking ones. up on how the why these questions exist right these are things that we have to uh stand in contrast to as the protagonists yeah i immediately thought when i saw intimacy which is i think actually the thing i would i'm most interested in so far i really thought about a character who is just naturally intimate with people we all know people who are like that they just hug people that they're yeah, like, like that talkers you're, and... you're describing my character concept Daniel. oh sorry um <laughs> yeah, no one would ever play that though that would be weird um sounds <laughs> good though um, but yeah, like, I like, yeah, I like that one too. That one or vulnerability. Yeah, I think it's like yeah, one. like intimacy, vulnerability, and like gender are the ones that I'm most interested in. There. Cool. cool. Um, I think yeah, I think authenticity for me is just such a fraught term to be like not action. Like I can see authenticity also functioning in the same way. But I also just like can't turn off my anthropology brain long enough to believe that authenticity actually exists. Yeah, so, like, authenticity is in there uh, very much as a nod to like the trans experience and that kind of stuff, right? That like people, it it's a trans thing. It's like yeah, you get assigned a gender, you have to perform that gender, and you can't you have I to hide your authentic. With with in like gender being a thing that we we hide, we all hide. 
like to a certain degree. Yeah, so like authenticity yeah. is very much there in in that position yeah. of like people living their truths or not that kind that, of thing. That, yeah i mean i'm interested in exploring those themes yeah i mean so i'm i'm feeling a little bad now i i actually want to vote against gender being on this list not because i'm not just exploring gender i'm absolutely interested in that but having it hidden to me makes that kind of exploration like just very different i don't know to me that one is especially because it implies that like the uniformity to me as well andrew like i do think about like maoist China or you know revolutionary Russia, where everyone has adopted the same dress and the same mode of. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not like redoing it, but uh, it's not as it's on the bottom of my list. But I'm totally into exploring gender throughout the game. Just not. I'm not sure I want it. You don't want it to be positioned China. as something that people hide from each other. Yeah, it's cool though. It's also very cool. So I don't yeah, know. like I don't mind the idea of uh, of it being a thing where there is like a normalized viewed gender right like um where where like gender is so yeah that's the thing of like right yeah i see what you're saying it's like the difference between hiding hiding your true or your authentic gender it kind of ties into yeah. what people were saying yeah everyone has there is one socially mandated gender and it's like citizen well <laughs> yeah, that's public, yeah, that's and true. publicly that's what everyone performs and then privately who knows right and that there is more there's more to so it, than, it yeah. yeah but there is if, like a blanket one that's over top like a, yeah, a but if super we were including gender there would be one gender that would be um like it would be suggesting that there's one gender that everyone performs whereas um whereas yeah if we're talking about authenticity instead we're talking about the, the which is more similar to our society where it's like <clears> you know, everyone <throat> is, has been given a gender everyone has a gender and they've been given it and that's that's been assigned right so ash i'm hearing that you're viewing a tension between these two options as being like pick uh, one or uh, the yeah. other to frame gender in one light or yeah. another um are yeah. we are we broadly interested in having intimacy be one of the two that we pick here because initially there was a bunch of enthusiasm around it yeah i'm, I'm down for and, like intimacy yeah. vulnerability because those feel like the same thing to me okay so um, let's let's put intimacy in there it, it follows very directly and then we want to just put intimacy and just like explore those other things without being because they could just... they could all flow from that yeah 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 like hey, what if we picked something else what if like dissatisfaction yeah dissatisfaction that's an interesting one for sure because again that feels like a way into the like the fashion and rituals and like the entire like countercultural ideology thing yeah to me dissatisfaction definitely makes the counterculture element stand out more because it's about demonstrating um, it's about publicly displaying that publicly showing that you're not shameful and yeah. unacceptable yeah yeah and that kind of could could also be a stand-in for authenticity in its in its own way as well so i i like that like yeah. because, because because like 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 dissatisfaction would be an element of authenticity it would be a, it's a small yeah well, yeah like there's lots of overlap thing. between these concepts and yeah. it's just about yeah. what we want to frame i, I like the idea of, of using dissatisfaction as our like flag for that section though is everyone cool Kira? with playing out that kind of stuff yes yeah, sounds great okay cool sure. yeah let's go with that then that's a good one yeah cool doing it so now we're going to switch gears and we're going to be talking about you four as the protagonists Whoa. I have so, to be a protagonist now? God. <laughs> I mean... I'm going to be a kind of hemi-tagonist or like a... Yeah, I'd look, I just want to fucking... What did I'm, you I'm say? An, I'm, I'm an amateur... I'm just applying random prefixes to the word antagonist. Oh. I'm, an amateur, I'm an amateur antagonist at best. Like, an amateur-tagonist. <laughs> um, so, regardless of anything else, y'all are going to have <laughs> the most agency in the story, and the, the camera is on you all most is what i'm saying okay okay we don't need to get too <laughs> high concept with it um, sorry andrew and so <laughs> you want to know? We'll, we'll behave <laughs> class <laughs> ruler We're not on playing the monster hearts andrew um so what we want to know about y'all initially is um why do you breach the barrier of dreams why are you people who go into other people's dreams what is that all about what motivates you to be this kind of person um because before 
this whole conspiracy thing comes up or maybe as part of it coming up um y'all are, are doing this behavior um and you're able to do this and so we want to know what that's about and why and so the options are to uncover truths that others ignore to help those whom society has forsaken to escape the tedium of day-to-day -day life to understand our waking lives to banish the ghosts of our past or to experience real intimacy what a great list that is it's really good mm -hmm. there are a bunch that follow really naturally from the fiction that we've already established like to yeah. my mind to experience real intimacy stands out mm -hmm. um or like to escape the tedium of day-to-day -day life right like see whereas like to to me i feel like the ones here that are most interesting are uh, and that follow most naturally are uh, to uncover truths that others ignore as a like yeah. as an extension of dissatisfaction right and yeah. yep. like to understand our waking lives as an extension of intimacy like yeah. those are the ones that seem most obvious to me but like, i would ask you i have a pretty strong negative reaction to experience real intimacy just because it implies that you can't experience real intimacy yeah exactly elsewhere and i'm really just exploring what real intimacy looks like elsewhere so oh i thought that that would just be an excuse for us to all be intimate like <laughs> i mean not not like have sex but like like be intimate with each other in role play like but i suppose you know the, I mean? the but the interesting thing is that like mechanically is that not true no. well mechanically <laughs> me mechanically we experience real intimacy in downtime and downtime yeah. is not like okay so here's explicitly here's what but I'll probably say. doesn't happen in the dream here's what i'll so, say like, is to remember that with yeah. this prompt too it's about motivation not a reality in yeah, we can feel that this yeah. is experiencing so, real. So yeah, like it's in okay. the pursuit of real intimacy, you went into other people's dreams, and then now that you have found these, like, because y'all are all having an, all, all have an established relationship with each other, um, that yeah. already exists at, as the game starts. So we know that y'all are close knit or friends or whatever else, um, and so it that makes that sense. You found yourself, found each other through this like dream diving or whatever we want to call it. Um, so framing it in that way is what makes sense to me and why it comes to mind for me yeah, yeah that's I, a better I, I i i really like the idea of to understand our waking lives because like in this incredibly conformist society like we don't truly know like any of the people who live around us and so like we were able to like access those people and like right get, as a like, way an, to, like an understanding of what's actually going on like under this societal veneer by like going into the dream and i think that's really interesting you know like we just wanted to be less lonely really <laughs> yeah i like that idea too i like the truth the truth one as well because like no one else knows the truth but us we yeah. the cult has revealed the truth to we know the cults you know what it's really up to or something like that yeah the idea of you as like whistleblowers kind of or yeah that makes us more like activists though i don't know if we want to do that i yeah. guess yeah i also, don't want to be i don't want to be like hero motivated yeah this is a yeah. very crusadery kind of one which we can we can go there but yeah it does it does a certain well, thing. That, yeah the least interesting to me is probably the help help others yeah. <laughs> that, this is so like precious oh. <laughs> and, and also, and also because like, we'd be the, superheroes, basically, Daniel, I, and like we'll be superheroes, but not like that. Yeah, yeah and like yeah, like the silly. the structure, the structure of the game autom like means yeah. that we will be doing that thing anyway. So I'm just gonna cross this one I don't know that we want to double down on it. Well, I like what Andrew said about this is kind of like maybe why our characters did this first too. It's yeah. not even necessarily what we're going to be doing once we discover the conspiracy. Maybe we'll yeah get on, we're definitely on the superhero train but in the course of playing through this and discussing with y'all like i'm already thinking yeah i need to rewrite this one as well to be more about like the that what caused you to transition from being a regular person to being this yeah what what what, what, yeah. what what drove us to first step into the yeah. dream or like what, right yeah something kind of more oh. in that space but so wait daniel which one did you like uh i really like what luke said about understanding the true nature of our lives like our, our waking and lives to understand our it's waking kind of lives. like a curiosity both about ourselves and about other people that to me is a very natural reason i'm also interested in more like a sharper more like weird one but that one to me i, I like i like the idea of the curiosity of, of our waking lives combined with the intimacy one in that like like intimacy is almost where we like we're we're, we're seeking intimacy to try and understand ourselves and others like mm. that's, that's yeah so just to pick one right 
or yeah, her. it's so it's like we're looking for internet friends because we, you know, they they truly understand us. Yep, yeah. and I mean that's why I'm on IRC. That's why I learned to people dream. Oh my gosh, you said IRC. <laughs> Yeah, I'm old. I'm old. I'm um, there is room for some blurring of the lines as well between like this idea of the dream and just the internet, and like a mashing together of those two concepts, like a, a matrix esque. Like, I mean, that's that's escapist. definitely where my brain is going, right? So, like, whereas yeah. I am, I am interested in the fruitful, the the fruitful, interesting contradiction that emerges when those two things are harshly divided. Or those because two things, yeah, exist because, simultaneously. Because as... that implies that in the dream, there is a dream internet also. Or that... Because the dream is a reflection of our waking lives. Or is we and so like a drinternet. Yeah, so, <laughs> what, right? Like, what is the drinternet like? I'm oh, curious yes. to find out the answer to this but, question. I think them we... being the same thing is the most obvious and the most trodden path here. And, like, not in an interesting way to me. Um... Cool. Yeah, I, mean, I like people. I like people mistaking them for each other. Yes. Them that, being yes. Yes. I definitely, I'm with. I don't like them being the same thing. Yeah, I'm. I'm fine. I'm cool with there being a separation. I think it is more interesting. Um, I would like to subscribe to Daniel's newsletter, please. I like that them be, serving yes. similar functional purposes in people's lives. So, like, yes. where y'all find solace is one space, and where other people seek it is. Just like the internet or whatever else. Yeah, other people like go into the anonymity of the internet and submerge themselves in that to like yeah, and so to understand their waking lives and experience intimacy with others. Whereas we're like, no, we're gonna go to another weirder place to do that. So to this wheel is, us this back onto some, topic, some, like belts for like in which we live and breathe stuff for me. It's a yeah, it's a little bit that, which is cool. Um, so yeah, so are we cool with to understand our waking lives? Is this the one that resonates most with folks? Yeah, it sounds, sounds good. it sounds like this is the case. So I'm just gonna underline it clumsily there we go i can't believe you're underlining things when i'm scribing away so neatly on the other page andrew because i i I even picked a fancy font i like to work that way okay so now we're going to go over to roles um which is the top of the next column for those of you who are following along um and so this is where we're going to start talking about you each as individuals so each of you is going to choose one or two from this list uh, and the roles are like the role you serve in the story or like the fiction is one way to look at it. Um, so they're kind of like character tropes in that way. Uh, but also you can think of it as like your role within the group um, and like something that characterizes your relationship to the others. Uh, and these are, yeah, you can combine these or just pick one. Um, and these are going to be an XP prompt uh, at end of session if you've like played into your character's role, you're going to earn XP for doing so. Um, And immediately following this is when we're going to pick playbooks. And the playbooks that you choose should reflect your role as well. So the roles are Forbidden Lover, Best Friend, Recovered Victim, Disillusioned Cynic, Tragic Genius, Weary Caretaker, Object of Desire, Next Victim, and Oracle of the Dream. This is the deck of the dream. I I, I have that we're in volume. Yeah, so these are these are roles for your characters. Okay. Yeah, I I have one that I'm really attached to, and then like a couple, and then a couple of thoughts about how to inform it. I really like Weary Caretaker. (laughs) Yes. Um, Do it. I'm really into that. And then I haven't decided whether it's like most interesting if it's informed by uh, best friend, recovered victim, or oracle of the dream. But like one of those to then inform weary caretaker is my feeling. Cool. This point. Um, and there can be overlap mm-hmm. as well. I mean, often it's yeah. helpful to have there be some difference, but we multiple all people be can. Oh, we all be geniuses. <laughs> That's right. We're all yes. tragic geniuses. We're also smart. I mean, yeah, oh like, my god! Literally, like letting other people check, uh, uh, like choose before. Like I want to like sit back because I would because I'm trying to make sure that I don't play like the shitty character that I, that is my default. <laughs> what's your What's Where's your shitty it? default? <laughs> yeah, I'm. Quite um, my shitty default would be would be would be a tragic genius and the. <laughs> uh, the one that the one that can't do social uh, social links. 
And oh my god! Yeah, you, and you would pull you like stranger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, Ash, like, let's let's be fair, right? Like, weary caretaker is just me leaning into like myself just, yeah. as a person. Yeah, this is a very wanna... Luke choice. I mean, role playing is just an alibi, right? I think. Exactly. <laughs> like, if if I if I'm in if I'm, if I'm being indulgent, um, I would do be it. a tragic genius objective design. Yeah, that's totally right? the like, possible. Fucking do it! That sounds amazing. Like and why yeah. shouldn't you be indulgent? You're playing, you're playing Sherlock Holmes, but, okay, not, I'm doing but it. not bad. <laughs> like you're an I'm interesting version of Sherlock Holmes that doesn't have the whole like he's a white guy, so we ignore that he's a prick to everyone because he's a quote unquote genius. Without that, yeah, bit. No, I don't know Sherlock Holmes ever right. had a desire, but yeah, um, there's a there's a um, yeah, no, I, I'm 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 all right. I'm gonna do it. Okay, it so you're how a, you define desire. Then. Tragic genius right. and object of desire. Is yeah. So we pick, we pick two. One, and combine one or two. If, one or two. You don't Andrew, have to combine them if you don't want to. I'm gonna recommend that you clear your underlines and we underline so that oh. it's color coded and people. Yeah. Yeah. Can y'all? Oh. I'm sorry. Can y'all color code with your colored <laughs> pencils? Goodness, how do I do that? So yeah. demanding. So draw freehand. Freehand, and then once you've selected freehand, there will be a little color swatch that you can click on. Um, cool. And you can pick whatever color, you want. whatever color best Ew. reflects your identity. Kira, as a trick, uh, do you see down the bottom where your name is? There's a little color swatch next to it. Yeah. If you change the color of that, it will mean that your color will always default to that color. I did it. Yeah. I don't know what to be. I kind of want to be best friend. <gasps> best what do you think? Yes. Of yes. Is there anything jumping out at you, Daniel? His best friend is like lots of tension. Mmm. Scarcity. Oh, Daniel's muted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we're well, still muted. Stre streamer bingo. <laughs> Everyone yeah. tick the middle square. That's Daniel, the free you one. Have somehow made yourself unable you, to audio. You mute him back. Oh, sorry. Time? I thought I just unmuted myself. I, I'm on a laptop, so I only have one screen. So I, I was looking at the other screen. Like, like having through everything. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what jumped out about me was Weary Caretaker, though Luke has jumped on that, which I, I acknowledge and accept. Um, Weary Caretaker, uh, Solution of Sinek, and Oracle of the Dream are the three that are interesting to me. Cool. And we're all young I'm characters, right? We're all like teenagers. Um. What's so that? we're gonna get into uh, how. So there's the how we pass our days prompt that comes up next after we've chosen playbooks, which is where we're gonna talk about like what our shared obligation is. So like, do we all work at a job? Do we all go mm -hmm. to school? Or so there's room for us to be in a range. I think. I mean, this Andrew, is a discussion we can have now too of like let, what age range y'all want to be in, and it's for me. It's a very let's, the idea of being be a 16-year-old Sinek is very different than a 40-year-old Sinek. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's, uh, let's be real, though, Andrew. Like, all of these choices in this playbook are just different kinds of work. Well, like, yeah, but, like, going to school is something that could fit into these. That's true, that's true. In a, but like, in a couple yeah. different ways. Um, absolutely. So, yeah, like, it's all about how we want to frame it and what we're interested in playing out. Uh, I would say, given that there is room for, like, intimacy we got to do the monster hearts thing of like everyone is kind of the age of majority or because you're yeah, yeah at least down. 16 yeah um i think and so yeah that would be my kind of comfort zone is like yeah yeah older than that um I, i'm also thinking for a bit in lover but is that weird uh, this is weird no it's not weird it's great it's fucking amazing what is, what is wrong with being forbidden sense? lover well, is it? Does it mean that? I mean, you're a lover of some of another character, Andrew. Is that correct? That would be my preference. You, Kira. It's up to you. But, but yeah, there's. <laughs> oh, I can interpret. There's it. room for you to define what that means. So, uh, ideally, that would point at okay. one of the other player characters because that's going to be the easiest yeah, for us to see on screen. Uh, and, are you, you know. best friends with? So are you a forbidden lover of someone who doesn't get along with your best friend? Is, is it, <gasps> yes. Do, do I have an unrequited love? I was wondering that. Oh, yeah. Somebody... yeah. Those two pointing at the same yeah. person is also really good. Yeah. I mean, or, or is someone here my sibling? And no, that's too far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if I like sibling. This, 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 like this, this is a Game I, of Thrones. That's, 
that's very anime. And... And... <laughs> that's I don't... That's... Makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe cousins. Cousins, Kira. Let's that's dial not it back a, just a little. You know, his step siblings, obviously. That makes it okay. Oh, yeah. No, that's yeah. No, thank, thank you, Andrew. Yep, you fixed Wait, that. what did you say? I said Andrew? step siblings, and then it's totally step legal. And oh, still, you're right. It's still as gross, but is legal yeah. in terms of the law as written. Um, that all the gross. Okay. But for me, that's not a hard line if you want to make it forbidden in that way or explore that kind of stuff. Like, just to be clear, there was a lot of, like, joking, uh, throwing yeah. up hands. But, like, if that's what you want yeah. your character to be, like, cool. I'm, Thank yeah, you. I'm not opposed to that. I was I was actually just going towards anime tropes that I, like, I recently yeah. watched Orin Host Club. And there's, like, you know, the two twins who are, like, forbidden lovers. And it's, like, mm. the kawaii. And, like, yeah. 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 Not something I'm necessarily into, but I think it's kind of funny. And, yeah, yeah, and like, like, I th but, but thank you for this... your validation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to dismiss totally anything room, out of hand. You know. There's totally room for the idea of like, you know, like an, an intimacy that is like more intense than society is comfortable with. Right. Right. And like that, without that, that going into. With a lot of the yeah, without that going to any squicky territory at all, like it is possible right. to be like, yeah, like siblings it, who are like very attached to one yeah. another to like yeah. a codependent we're like extent. in uh like in uh what's that movie with alicia silverstone and she like dates her step stepbrother <laughs> oh yeah you know is that? from the 90s and it's uh, like she's a, cruel she's a cool girl cruel intentions no wasn't it no close yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. the other one Okay. Cruel Intentions did also have the kind of like pseudo sibling incest thing. Cruel Intentions did, but that's because it was based on a Jane Austen novel or something. No, it was, it was, a was just based on a Jane Austen novel. Cruel Intentions is based off Cruel Intentions, which is another another French movie. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a book too. Maybe, I, maybe it might also be a book. I, I don't know, but there's definitely an earlier movie that that was. Sorry, we're book. drifting. And Andrew, what choice? I, I also <laughs> underlined uh, recovered victim. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> so Daniel, I'm seeing that you're Oracle of the Dream and recovered victim. Yeah, oh. to me that seems an interesting combination because I've experienced, in some ways, the virus. Mm -hmm. My dream oracleness, whatever the heck that means, is kind of tied into that. I have, maybe I have, I have insight, but it's based out of trauma or it's based out of yep weirdness. So totally, yeah, that sounds great. This is, yeah. this is the point at which I... Okay, so I'm going to pick Disillusion Cynic. Nice. Yeah, that's my going... original combo, by the way. Hmm? That was my original combo. I was going to be a weary caretaker who was a cynic. Yeah, but I'm, but I'm going to, like, very specifically recast it as, like... Because what I, what I actually want, and what I'm using Disillusion Cynic as, like, a way to, like, bend into is, like, the opposite of Oracle of the Dream in terms of, like, Oracle of the Waking World. And so disillusioned cynic is going to be my way into that space of being like very grounded and very world we world weary awesome. and like it's awesome yeah cool. very familiar with like the way that the waking world is and kind of like yeah disillusioned yeah. disillusioned with that and yeah how dysfunctional and like toxic it is you're really emo you sound really emo <laughs> no 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 Kira Kira all of my characters I can't help myself all my characters are like painfully sincere and heartfelt all the time i love it that's andrew, a great andrew, can, andrew can, can attest to this can it's confirm like, okay yeah. so at this point uh i must instruct each of you to select a character playbook that reflects the roles that you have chosen what are character playbooks that you can choose from you might ask <laughs> and i will go through the list so the options are the unlikely hero which is like you're Steven from Steven Universe or Madoka from Madoka. Like you're the character who isn't a magical girl yet. And we see you become that in play. Uh, and so they are about uh, like being really sincere and really hopeful uh, and kind of pathetic. Hello. <laughs> um, I will be playing the unlikely hero. Well, let's, not Love make, it. let's not make any choices quite yeah. yet because I want to run okay. down the whole list. So right. the next, next is the right. Enigma. Uh, mm -hmm. The Enigma is the like tuxedo mask character. You're very aloof. You're very mysterious. No one knows that there is a connection between your regular identity and your fancy like per you know magical persona identity. Um, so the rest of the party doesn't know that you're you know by night you are the masked hero, whatever. Um, so it's a secret even to the yeah so they're 
PCs. Yeah, they're like friends with you okay. in your mundane self, and they are allies with you in your magical self, but they don't know oh, I the see. same person. Okay. Um, and you're all about like helping from the shadows, and you can like deliver monologues and do other big flashy moody things that aren't necessarily like doing anything. That's kind of what the Enigma's all about. You're you're like the most mysterious. I love this character type. It's not like it matches with what I've come up with so far, but I just want to say <laughs> it's it's pretty fun. I want to make ridiculous monologues. The, I was gonna do that no matter what. Sorry. There's literally a move yeah. where you can deliver a monologue and no one's allowed to interrupt you. That's a perfect it's one move. of their moves. Uh, <laughs> next up is the harmony, which is inspired by Garnet from Steven Universe. So you're like a composite person. You're actually two people who have combined into being a single person. Uh, I wonder if if that that also like might tie into the the oh no because you you already did that in the last game don't worry I was gonna say like ties into the Orin Host Club like twins if thing been lover yeah yeah we know we've been there we've never been there yeah you can yeah do he that. beats his twin um, <laughs> yeah and Andrew says from personal experience yeah there's room for this to like there's a little bit of gray area in terms of what it exactly looks like uh, whether that's like you're just twins who do everything together and like speak at the same time and are like functionally one person. Or if you are... Could it be a like, dream self and a human self? Uh, yeah, and it might be that there's a... Or a trauma self and a current self. Or That, yeah, seems, inter- there's... Like, that seems interesting for my character. And then, Just... yeah, when you uh, fall into Eclipse, so like when you're in your like darkest self kind of stance, that's when the two of them fracture and are no longer in harmony and don't work together. Uh, in terms of what the harmony does in play, uh, they're kind of a leader type of character they're really good at organizing other people and doing teamwork stuff and supporting kind of the rest of the crew uh next up is the guardian uh and the guardian is a very like straight up protector and healer uh type of character uh you're always on the lookout for danger you're always looking after the other members of the crew um they have moves where they can like have a a code they have to adhere to um stuff like that so they're very very traditional this is like most of the sailor scouts in sailor moon or whatever this is like a very um first choice kind of playbook uh there's the outsider and the outsider has a rival uh and this can be a one-way rivalry or a two-way rivalry at your option um and the outsider is really brooding and dark and has like a troubled past and is very direct and brash is this like the fire guy from Avatar? That... Yeah, totally. That would that would. I was I answers. was about to go for Naruto, but like also yes, Zuko is definitely. I have a very awesome. limited repertoire of genre references here, so. I'm just gonna... Yeah, but like yeah, the outsider Zuko. kind of fits more into the shonen space, like the boy little boy anime space. Um, but there are examples of it in magical girl fiction as well, like Sailor like Mars. Like whichever Sailor Scout it was. Sailor Mars and Sailor Moon is definitely. Sailor Moon's rival. Like, she's always kind of got a bone to pick with the other character. It doesn't have to be that y'all are enemies. It's, you know, mm-hmm. you're still working towards the same goals, but you always have something to prove. You're kind of got this, like, chip on your shoulder. Yeah, it could also be, like, the main character in Kill the Kill. Like, she's very much, I don't know if anyone has seen Kill the Kill. I haven't seen it, but, like, yes, That's, I don't yeah. doubt that there are, because there are lots of examples of this in the kind of source material. Um, this could, it's also really fun to play this as, like, your rival is your best friend or is your lover or whatever like and that the tension of that relationship is what gives you strength um next up is the stranger uh and the stranger has like a different relationship to emotion than the other playbooks and so whereas everyone else will get to like hang out and be friends with each other the stranger is always a little bit detached um and unable to like cross that emotional distance i guess would be a way to look at it uh which makes them way better at dealing with the shitty day-to-day obligation stuff um and makes them much more like calm and grounded than the other characters as well but they're very cold Mm -hmm. um there's the time traveler and the time traveler has traveled either forward or backwards in time to meddle in someone else's fate so you have a specific member of the crew that you need to like change their fate or their destiny or whatever, um, and that is explicitly laid out. You say like what thing you are here to prevent, um, and you're all about being kind of ominous and creating the sense of like I don't actually. 
the game doesn't require that you know what's going to happen to act like you know what's going to happen um there is room for this to be a character who's like gone through multiple timelines and has like been repeating the same things over and over again um stuff like that so there's a bunch of moves that will support you in expressing that kind of fiction uh and that's the last one that's all of them there are seven I can recommend to other people. I'm not going to play it because I already did it. But the Time Traveler is a really good time. A really good time? Um, hey. I'm looking at either The Outsider or The Stranger. I'm not, not like, could go either way. Um, okay. If, if I were doing an Outsider, it would be a much, like, cooler Outsider. Like, um, it wouldn't be the, like, hothead. It would be the, it would be the, like, slightly more brooding version yeah like a more superior highbrow kind of outsider yeah like you're you're welcome to characterize your sasuke like. not nart i get it <laughs> but yeah i haven't i haven't made the decision there between those two okay and sorry just that was outsider and stranger were the two that you were looking at um which ones are you looking at luke i am the unlikely hero you're gonna be the unlikely hero okay cool like both both because like it just like it it maps so perfectly to this concept like mm -hmm. that there is no other choice i could make and i though i suppose guardian could like is also possible and also just because i'm really interested to like get to see the unlikely hero in play because like ever since you were first designing it i was like this is conceptually really cool and the limits it involves are really interesting and so like i'm i to get to play it great okay well feel free to Grab that metaphorical playbook. Um, I need to assign you a character sheet. Here I go. Yes, thank you. That would help. I'm going to assign everyone character sheets. They come with excellent names that you don't need to keep, but are excellent. I will um, use your names. But you totally should keep. Uh, there is a name list on I believe the crew I'm playbook. With me. Yeah, there is a name list on the crew playbooks. There, I like these ones in this playbook, so. I don't know. Daniel, what are you thinking? I don't know what to, I don't I'm pretty open. I don't have strong Yeah, um starts writing trying to write them down so I don't forget. Yeah. The three I'm thinking about are Harmony, Stranger, and Guardian. So Har Harmony, I'm just in the idea of someone who has gone through trauma and split into two people. Cool. Yeah. Um I'm, the stranger is the one who has a emotion is emotionally distant, right? Yes. So that's what just seems to me like someone who is a recovering cult member kind of thing, which is a possibility for this character. Yeah, so both of those could reflect trauma. If Yeah, I'm mostly thinking about, I'm really, all my choices are kind of based on the recovering victim part of my role choice. Yeah, I think the Guardian is an interesting pick in that context yeah, Guardian, as well, because it's the me, idea yeah. of having been wounded and being on the lookout and like knowing what the dangers could be because you've been exposed to them. I also like, for Not me, the Guardian has an problems. element of... Uh, I deal with other people's problems so, so i don't have to deal with mine like yes you know yeah martyrdom is yes. definitely part of it so um so all those i'm interested in all those cool i haven't looked at them yet in I will th i'll say like the martyrdom thing like that sounds super interesting that's all i'm saying um what's jumping out at you kira uh hello i'm well just from this, your descriptions i was thinking uh the Enigma or the Outsider um, or Harmony. I'm not a huge, I don't think I want to be Harmony because I think that is like kind of the opposite of the tension that I was creating with best friend and forbidden lover. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Totally. It's like too confusing to have all those things, I think. Yeah, I feel uh, like right, the Outsider is a really good way to get at the forbidden lover angle. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking that too. Like, if it were like me personally, I love that kind of thing where it's like there is this kind of antagonistic mechanic, and you attach it to someone that you that the fiction says that you like and care about a lot. Yeah, and it just creates this really fun twist that you can play into. Okay, cool. So it the, sounds the like other option is, is like because I could take outsider and make Cure's character my rival. Is the other one? It, yeah, like, the the rivalry well, could true. go the other way, where the person who is your lover. You are, their, you rival. are their rival. Yeah, yeah, there's like a the tension coming the other direction. <laughs> that's, that, that's the yeah. yeah, you're just like uncomplicatedly like I think you're really great, and they're like you're my rival. Let's fight. 
I have created this strong fiction in my brain about who you are. That you is don't not understand me. <laughs> um, yeah. Ash, was that one of yours that you were thinking about? Yeah, mine was, was Stranger and Outsider was the two that I was thinking about. I'm leaning more towards Outsider. Um, okay. Just well, you should take I, Outsider. Just because, yeah, I, I like, I think I do want to be able to take the social links action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, so um, importantly, worth- the Stranger can't do two out of the four downtime activities. Which are? are share intimate moments. So, uh, oh, well, that's yeah. all I'm interested in doing, so I guess I won't play so, that yeah, Don't play the, well, sorry, so the only way that the stranger can share an intimate moment with someone or help them recover is if they take a move where they leave anonymous gifts for them. Oh. <laughs> so there's like a, a way, <laughs> but yeah, like by default, they don't, they aren't mm. able to cross that emotional distance. Mm. Um, so that's definitely noteworthy the other two that they can do is work on long-term projects and investigate the darkness so they can like try to figure out the conspiracy when is the other so the other two data actions one of them is links one of them is so yeah there's the like social link action which turns into share an intimate moment in this series playbook there is help a friend recover which is how you get rid of harm is you help someone else get rid of their harm uh and then there is investigate the darkness which is about I mean, it does what it says, and that helps you then do missions and other stuff that relate to the information that you uncover. And then there's work on a long-term project, which is you tell me, the MC, what you want to accomplish, and I'm like, that's going to be like a eight-segment clock, and you're like, cool, and then you chip away at that. Okay. And so that's a way of getting at things that are outside of the core framework of the game. We just handle that through a generic project system. Well, I guess I'll be Tuxedo Mask then. <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's another just... one that's really good for the lover thing. Yeah. Because there can be the whole I'm like so Spider Man, Mary Jane thing of like a- asymmetrical relationship. Someone is in love with your superhero <laughs> yeah. persona, but not your mundane self. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, it's very sad for me, and I can't communicate it to them. And We're yeah. not, we're not, we're, we're, at, oh, if only someone else were also <laughs> playing the Enigma, and then we could do the full like miraculous Ladybug, th- ladybug thing where, I don't where, know what all- that is. Miraculous Ladybird is like a magical girl French CGI animated series. And oh. it like it leans like all the way into the like both of them have secret identities because all of the crushes within that <laughs> square are like <laughs> non, you know, like leading into one another. I'm I'm really so like one person's superhero that. identity has a crush on the other person. <laughs> yeah. If I go for the harmony as a split persona, that could that could also That's true. That's true. That's so we, could, we could we could go there. Okay, I'm just going to actually read the three and see what the yeah, moves look yeah. like. Yeah, so and they're, Andrew, all, they're just, all in the PDF there. So y'all Andrew, just, just to touch base, because I can't remember. I like I know what Blades' position is on this is, and I can't remember if you changed it. Yeah. Multiples of the same playbook? Yeah, like if everyone wants to be the outsider, that's also totally fine. Like, there is no hard line yeah. there. I mean, I just, like, I just think it's like it's good to know that that's on the table, because like... So, yeah, if two people want to be outsiders games, it's not and have each other as rivals, that's fine. That's going to take up, a, you know, it's going to create a certain dynamic. So, yeah, the, the playbooks that y'all choose really do carve out, like, a thematic space for the game. Um, like, if there's a time traveler, then we have time travel s- stuff. And if there's an enigma, then we have, like, secret identity stuff that it brings yeah. up. I think the enigma really fits into the setting too, with like this duality. Mm, Yeah, yeah, the conformity stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think I think my pre-gen. So I'm making pre-generated content for all of these as well. So like, there's just like a conversion that you can just run, Um, and the combo for in a maze of dreams really should include an enigma because it's just such a good fit for the play. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So that's me. So I'm doing that. That's cool. great. What do I do now? Uh, do we so... want to take? Oh, Daniel break, has to pick. Andrew, Once after pick. Daniel, after Daniel picks. Yeah. yeah, let's suss that last thing out, and then we'll take a break. And when we come back, uh, having picked the playbooks, we're then going to keep moving through our, like our list picking stuff, and then we'll fill out a few more details of the characters before I get y'all to go through the character playbook procedure. Cool. Um, so just picking which one you want to play for now is good. Uh, Daniel, you. are hemming and hawing do you have any clarity after reading or are they all so good that you want to also good um we have a question for the group so you mentioned the harmony has a kind of leadership can take kind of leadership role Mm -hmm. guardian has a more reactive 
protector role. And then the stranger would just be a, a different thing altogether. Yeah. I'm kind of leaning towards, I think, Harmony or Guardian. Mm. Um, stranger is kind of cool, but I like the idea of social links. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I, I like a more complicated version of like reaction to trauma versus just kind of shutting down. Yeah. Um, I like the Harmony for some of the angles we were discussing about the, the double. Like, I think my take on the Harmony would be like, it's like a split. Of a tra- like a, somehow the trauma would be the like or the, or the background in when I was a victim or my current self would be split in some way and maybe one of them would be more manifest in the dream or vice versa. Yeah, and there's also uh, room for that because everyone will have an avatar, which is this like right. There's also meta that. identity that you have. So so yeah, I think that could be a really interesting take on the. Harmony. But I also like Guardian because Guardian is a very straightforward role, and I have a kind of complicated character, like. Straightforward playbook, and I have a kind of complicated role set up for, in my mind. And I like to kind of. Mm, yeah. I'm really interested in in a, in a in like yeah. I think think it would be cool for like if you're an oracle of the dream and a recovered victim, that makes like that sets you up really interestingly. If you're a guardian, because it's like I've seen, I've been there, and I want to protect others from it. I think, I think is an interesting. Yeah, the um, like, the thing you mentioned about like neglecting their own self care and like. Yeah. self-medicating by helping others like that that's the very intersection guardian. the intersection of that yeah of that that p- part of the guardian and that part of like rec- a former victim like that's very interesting to me um, um one thing i will say about the harmony is that it is the mechanics will characterize your character as being more kind of healthy and put together and like ground and like centered than i think yeah. you're going for like there will be a tension between the mechanics and your concept a yeah. little bit sounds like, like guardian it. is the go-to uh, yeah i think i think guardian that's is a good pick okay cool okay well let's take another break um break time. and then when we come back we can hash through the last of this list picking stuff and then spend some time on characters all right so we're on break <laughs> <laughs> 